Very good morning, my dear EU second year students and also learning enthusiasts. By the divine grace of Lord Sharanabhasveshwara, I am once again in front of you delivering this particular lecture. I hope the previous uh, class, which ended some half an hour ago, and this particular gap would have rejuvenated your spirits. I think you are very well ready for this particular class. In my yesterday's class, I gave you an introduction to this particular play. In my yesterday's class, I, it was something like an answer, right? An answer to a specific question which can be given for six months. The question could be, what are the uh, qualities of a one-act play and how can we justify or how much we can justify when it comes to the context of this particular play. This was my answer and uh, the, the answer to that particular question I gave in my yesterday's class. In today's class, we are going to start the very text and we are going to see how these two playwrights, Spanish playwrights, yesterday I gave you a very sharp biographical sketch of the two writers. They are the brothers from Spain. They wrote more than 200 plays. We learned about them. You can refer to my video, yesterday's video, in order to know more about these two writers. Now, in today's class, as I said to you before, we are going to learn about this particular play. Now, what is the significance of these two diagrams? Let me explain first. Now you see here, this is the past. That is what I wanted to show here. This is the past. In my tomorrow's class, I am not very sure whether we can have enough space for all these drawings or not. Because I wish to do some other thing in my tomorrow's class when we go there. So yesterday I told you a particular technique somewhere here. Uh, I showed you how a story can be narrated. If you take a story called uh, the story written by uh, none other than Leo Tolstoy, that is uh, too dear, I, I gave you the format of the particular story which appears like uh, a, a pipeline, right? It's a linear diagram. So this, this screenplay of the story is in the form of a uh, diagram, I mean what is called line. It's a single line through which uh, the contents of the story go from one moment to the other, that we saw uh, in that particular class. In yesterday's class, if you remember it very clearly, um, I told you how this story can be a sample of the swing technique, the screenplay technique, which is known as the swinging technique. That is, there are several types of techniques when we narrate stories, and one particular technique is what is called the swing technique, which you can see in this story. So, yesterday I showed you that also. First, it begins in the present, then goes into the past, and again uh, it ends in the future. So, I will take this as future. So, let us take this part as our future. This is the uh, this is how the play actually ends. Mm, we need to remember that particular part. So, future is this. Both of them should be once again together. With that expectation, the play actually ends. The past, of course, as I told you before, it talks about uh, the, what is called their, their uh, very association in the beginning for a long time and their patron, what happens. Even at that time, they wanted to be together, but they couldn't be together. The situations were like that. And again, even at the present, I mean, even they have an expectation that they could be like this in future, in this form, they could be like that they are expecting, but how far those expectations, expectations can be really working, that only time should tell. So they are also not sure whether this is going to be a reality or not. So that is something which is really wonderfully portrayed here. I say it wonderful only in the context of the of that particular country and nothing else more than that. So please remember these four particular things when we focus on this contents of the play. So let me start the play. The play opens 
you have some stage directions also given. So you have uh, Donna Lara, yesterday I told you, various uh, characters, who are the characters also I told you. So obviously you can understand now, this is Donna Lara and this is Don Gonzalo. Donna and uh, what is called Don, both of them are like uh, Mrs. and uh, what is called Mr. Okay, they are like titles. Mr. Mr. is a Don and then uh, Mrs. is what is called a term of respect, okay, Donna. Donna is the feminine gender for Don. So Don and Donna, and you have two more characters, they are none other than uh, the servants, okay. Uh, Petra is the servant maid, and Johnny Toe is Don Gonzalo's, none other than servant. So how this particular play is going to uh, start, with what kind of note we can have, we are going to see here. As I told you in the very beginning classes, very clearly, whenever we do the textual part, I always expect you to um, carry the text with you. Because when I am reading it, you must be able to follow. See, now you can see I am using the, not the textbook, uh, what is called the paper format. I am not using the paper textbook, I am using the, what is called electronic format, PDF I am using. So what does it mean? It means that you can also use, you can take a computer or a laptop or some other provision you should make. Don't uh, say where there is a will, there is a way. If you wish to have the text in front of you in any format, you can have it. So I always recommend you to have the textbook in front of you. That is the reason why first class I dedicate it to the, to the introduction. In the name of introduction, I not only give you the essential information, that you need to be using in your answers, but also giving you that particular idea, giving you the awareness to have the text at least in the next class. That is why first class I always dedicate it in that way. So having told you all these things with the expectation that you are having the textbook right in front of you. If you are not having the textbook right in front of you, the, the next part of the lectures, you, I recommend you to uh, revisit and then you listen to it one more time with the text in front of you. Then you can notice the difference between your experience when you are having the textbook with you and when you are not having the textbook with you. So without any further delay, let me go into the uh, unit. So the first scene, I don't say first scene, second scene, all this. It is a single scene. One act plays, one important thing is there should be one single scene. You should not have multiple scenes. Unity, I, three unities I, I wrote here, if you remember correctly. The three unities are unity of place, unity of time, and unity of action. So when it comes to unity of action, there should not be multiple scenes, there should be one scene. And of course, in this case, it is a sunny morning in a retired corner of a park in Madrid. In a retired corner, this is something very important. A retired corner, there are multiple meanings for this word retired. Most important I will take. Uh, retired, maybe that is uh, what is called uh, uh, interested or Maybe that is like, that spot is like mostly by old people, not youngsters. This is one thing. A retired corner, it's a secluded place. Other people will not be uh, preferring to go towards that side. This is number two. Number three, already there can be here and there some um, middle-aged or even old people. Already they are there. And so the youngsters are not preferring that particular site to be seated or used. So that is why it is a retired corner, it is a secluded place, it is a place liked by old people or it is a place occupied by, occupied by old people already. So you can take any one of these convenient meanings for that and that way a park in Madrid. So the story is happening in Madrid. So this is the past, if, I, if you remember it correctly, this is the past, this is what happened in the past that we see now. So we are going to see the present. So let us see the present part here. So past leads to present. So what is the past? We will see that also today. And future remaining part we shall see today. So let us see the present here. What are the various things which we can see in the name of present? We will see that here. Present rather. 
instead of keeping it like that, I will put it this way. Present. So, the, we imagine or anyone who starts reading the play or watching the play, they should imagine that it begins in the present and then goes into the past. So, that kind of uh, what is called uh, um, mindset we should have when we start this particular thing. So, please remember, we should condition ourselves uh, towards uh, that kind of idea. It is very important. Without that, I don't think we can uh, really enjoy the contents of the play. So, let, that is very essential in my opinion. So, let us see how this can be uh, dealt with. Mm, okay. Right. So we can take it in this format. I need to have some space even for writing, writing the contents. So let us see how this is going to happen in the present. So in, in present, what are the various things we can find? We will see here. I will write one after the other. So where is the place? The present place or the future place, whatever it is, the place is none other than um, place is uh, what is called a park in Madrid. Better we call it Madrid because that's that's how they pronounce. And it is a sunny morning and the season is autumn. So time. When it comes to time, time is uh, autumn season, as I said to you yesterday. Let us take uh, this part because autumn season directly indicates their mellowing age, old age. So it is correct. And then sunny morning. A sunny morning. Sunny stands for hope, and morning, of course, is the beginning. So it has a reference to the past. So the present has a reference to both. So it has a reference to the past and it also has a reference to future. So that is how we are going to see both of them here. So that is the reference here. So time we know, place also we know. And the characters, as I said to you, I won't be writing much uh, over here. We will take it in the form of important points so that we can Enjoy the total uh, play. There are four characters, as I said, Donna, Laura, then Don Gonzalo, her servant main, that is Petra, and Don Gonzalo, and of course, uh, his servant, that is Juanito. These are the four people we have in the play four characters. So all the four are introduced immediately, not taking much time. So what happens? We see everything in the form of points. So what happens here is a bench at right. So we have a bench at right. You have on the right hand side of the stage. And then um, Donna Laura, a handsome white hair old lady, white hair old lady, of about 70, refined in appearance, her bright eyes and entire manner, giving evidence that despite her age, her mental faculties are unimpaired. Unimpaired means not disturbed. Impaired means disturbed. Pair. Pair is the root word. Impaired. But it's not in a pair. That is got cut. Cut is disturbed. So, and enters leaning upon the arm of her maid. So, a, a particular woman who has got the traces of her past beauty. Let me put it in that way. She still has the traces of her past beauty. She was wonderfully beautiful when she was very young, but still uh, she has got that particular uh, traces. Okay, those traces which uh, defined and refined her beauty, erstwhile beauty. So that one you still have. And she has got uh, a particular um, serpent made Petra and she is just placing her hand on her and she enters the stage. In her free hand, she carries a parasol which also serves as a cane. So, this is another stage direction. You should uh, remember this as well. Okay. So, she is uh, carrying a small parasol. Of course, I didn't 
portray that particular thing here. I didn't indicate that, but um, you can at least imagine that she carries a walking stick and even a small purse which can contain uh, um, what is called these old women they carry. Okay, sometimes even umbrella. So this originally an umbrella, which is nothing else more than that. It's only an umbrella, which is really very vibrant it's, or even colorful. You can take that particular word as well if you want. So this is how the play begins. The writer uses very clear cut description that is she too has got an umbrella and that particular umbrella is very very colorful. Okay, So we can have the umbrella drawn here if you wish like that. So I can draw it for you. Imagine that that umbrella actually is placed here. Okay, you got the parasol as well, which is really colorful. You got a parasol as well. And she is using it as a walking stick, you can consider. She has got a small pouch as well with her. Donald Lava stands. I am so glad to be here. I feared my bench, my seat would be occupied. What a wonderful morning. That's how it starts. What a beautiful morning she she really wonders that it was a very beautiful morning. She never expected that. When you say what a wonderful morning. You are not expecting that it would be such a wonderful morning. Otherwise, you won't say like that. Imagine these exclamations actually come in that way. Imagine there was a knock on the door and you open the door and you find a, very, a person whom you knew when you were young. And you lost connection for the past 20, 25 years. And all of a sudden you discover what would be your feeling like that. So that, that particular uh, surprise comes very naturally. So she also expresses the same. Petra says it is sunny because the sun is hot. Yeah, that means usually the sun is not expected to be that hot. Yes, you are only 20. She sits down on the bench. Oh, I feel more tired today than usual. Go if you wish um, to chat with your God. Now, when she starts ta talking about uh, what is called uh, uh, the very uh, information relating to the climate and all, the servant maid is a little impatient. She thinks that she should not be there with the old lady. What should I do with this old lady? That could be her uh, motivated thought. So what she thinks, she feels a little impatient and this Donna Laura is very quick to learn that. So she says, go if you wish to chat with your God. I am tired, I can sit here, I can do the regular activities, you can go. So. This is, uh, this is how the writer is able to indicate the theme in, at the outset itself. This is not a play of revenge. This is not, uh, there are no other themes. The basic theme is what is called love. Love is the basic theme. Okay. The writer is uh, very clearly indicating that particular feature at the outset itself. That is love, the theme of love. Okay. Theme of love. The theme of love is introduced is introduced at the outset. At the outset. At the beginning itself, it is revealed to us. It is indicated to us. Okay. Petra. Who is Petra? The servant maid, rather. The maid. Petra, the maid. Okay, he is allowed to uh, chat with the God, with the God of the path. She is allowed to chat. Now you can go and chat, leave me alone, something like that. That is how she was able to disperse her particular character. Maybe Petra is not so much comfortable. Uh, with what is called with the way in which things are happening. So uh, she doesn't rather feel comfortable to sit with the old lady for a longer time. Maybe because of that reason she, she is asked, okay you go, you go on there, do whatever you want there. And of course you can see how uh, cleverly Donna Laura says something. She says something like that. Uh, she immediately Petra responds, he is not my senora, she, he belongs to the path. Senor, senora, something like sir, madam, something like that. 
So he is not mine, Senora. He belongs to the farm. So you can understand that. So she agitatedly says that. Then Donald also says he belongs more to you than he does to the farm. Go find him, but remain within calling distance. So now you know very well what is happening. He belongs to you more than to the farm. That is, both of you are already in love. I know that. Go, go, but don't go far away. Be within the calling distance. Petra has no other answer except this. I see him over there waiting for me. Now that even that fellow might have come. Who is that fellow? We don't know. He is not John Dito. He must be some other person who is a, who is not at all revealed in this play. Do not remain more than ten minutes. Very well, Senora. So the time that is given is ten minutes. So what is happening uh, after this episode? After uh, Donna Lara is separated from Petra, whatever that happens covers only ten minutes. It's something like that. Whatever that happens, that is the past incident and future expectations. Whatever that is happening, everything happens. Within a very short span of time, that is just ten minutes or ten minutes like that. She said, but we can add another ten or fifteen minutes for it, making it roughly twenty twenty-five minutes. So what is happening is just a little about that. Then I don't know what is the matter with me. Okay, what does the senora wish? Wait a moment. She says, now what does the senora wish? What does she want? Give me the breadcrumbs. I don't know what is the matter with me. Smiling. So at that time, she, even Petra has already forgotten her duty. What is her duty? To give the bag, a small bag containing some uh, bread crumbs. Okay, some bread crumbs, the pieces of bread, dried bread. They have already been brought, and it is, Petra is car carrying with her, but she has forgotten. The moment she has seen her lover, she actually forgot one, and she was about to go. It is uh, Donna Lara who calls her. You come back here. She comes back. Yes, ma'am. What do you want? Then what about the breadcrumbs? Give me, give me. Hey, what's happening with me? I have forgotten. Let's see what Donna Lara says. I do. Your head is where your heart is with the God. Your head and your heart, both of them are in one place. That is another than the God and the Lord. That particular God only. So go to that particular God. So love. This is what is called heart. And now I will write even the brain. Maybe that will definitely uh, connect these two themes. That is the head center and the heart center. Both of them are with that particular fellow, and that is other than the God. So that is what she says. How could she know that? How could she say when somebody is in love? Definitely, head and heart will be at the same place. Like that. How can we say? Very wonderfully, Lord Hanuman says in the Ramayana when, uh, when because he is a witness to the love that is expressed by Ramachandra, and the other love that is expressed by Sita Mahadevi. You don't see much, I mean, difference at all. Then Hanuman's turn is to be surprised. So at that time, Lord Hanuman says to himself, "Why? How come both of them really is? Uh, I mean." What is called uh, are unable to forget each other and express similar in similar terms their love for the other. How is it possible? Then he gets the the answer. The answer is ah now I understand. Sita Mahadevi's heart is with Ramachandra and Ramachandra's heart is with Sita Mahadevi. That's why there is no difference at all. Only those people who know the the experience of true love. Can really experience that particular love and try to voice that as well. That is what uh, Donna Lara is uh, trying to do. I am not euphemistic here. Please don't think in that way. But I am trying to bring home the thought behind that particular uh, statement. How could she say that? I do. You, your head is where your heart is with the God. Unless she was a uh, what is called a past lover. If if Donna Lara was not a past lover, you cannot expect her to speak in those terms. That's the reason. So the theme of love has been introduced in the first part itself. So the writer is the writer style. Both of them are very clear when they have introduced it. So you are what they are telling the spectators clearly. If you are not interested in love stories and all, 
this is not the place for you. Please get out of this place. Don't even come here. Because you are going to be disappointed. If you are aiming for a detective story, that is not going to happen here. This is entirely different. Done. Here, Senora, she hands down Lara a small bag and exit, uh, and she exits. Exits Petra by the right. From the right side of the, uh, what is called uh, the stage, Petra leaves after giving that bag. After that, what happens, you see. Donna Lara. Adios. Adios means something like bye. Okay, adieu, adios. Uh, then what happens, you see, glances towards uh, trees of right. Here they come. So it, it may be a few seconds pass by. And there is some kind of returning of silence. And when silence has returned, then she starts uh, speaking. Of course, she is speaking to the birds, but definitely uh, uh, we cannot expect so easily. We cannot believe that a person can actually speak to the birds and other things. It is quite strange. It happens. There are many people who can speak to the birds. And don't think that it didn't happen here. Uh, hundreds of people have noticed this. Hundreds of people have equivocated. Hundreds of people have voiced them. Hundreds, uh, hundreds of people have what, are, what is called gave, uh, have given testimonials to what they saw. Now, what am I speaking? I am actually speaking about Sri Ramana Maharshi, who was speaking to all these uh, what are called animals and birds. It was almost a very repeated sight. Not every day, but definitely a repeated sight that many hundreds of monkeys would gather around the ashram of Ramana Maharshi. And then they make, they used to make so much of noise that the disciples get irritated and they come to Swamiji and complain. Many monkeys have come into the ashram, we don't know what. Don't worry, I will solve. So he would come out of his uh, small hut or cave right there and then he would go to the monkeys. The king of one group, monkey's king. King of one group, head monkey, let me call it. Head monkey of one group and the second monkey, monkey group. So both of them would sit there and they, they speak as if human beings, right? Not in human language, in English, so like that they would say something. Maharshi would listen to them very attentively and after that he would call both of them. He would speak in Tamil or Telugu or whatever language that he would prefer at that time. In that language only he would speak and pat on the two monkeys. What would happen? We don't know. All the monkeys would go. After that, he would turn back and he would, and then all these, all his disciples would ask him, "What have you spoken? How could they disappear from this place so calmly?" He said two things at that time. All these people are not ordinary people. You see them as monkeys, but they are Mahayogis. There was a small dispute between them. I just solved it, and that's why they are happy. They have left. Many of the people saw Maharshi was actually speaking to these uh, birds and then animals and even uh, even small insects. He would speak. But what a great man would, would he have been? We didn't get the opportunity to see him physically. But if you can type in YouTube something like Ramana Maharshi something, you will definitely get many videos in which these things lively happen. And some videos are even recorded as well. So it is in that way, of course. I am not hiding the character of Donna Lara, but there is a small allusion here. So don't think this as an entirely different practice. Don't don't you experience in your own houses. Imagine you have a pet dog or a pet cat or a pet duck or a pet alligator or a pet tiger. Okay, this happened in my own life. I think once upon a time I told you it happened in Africa, our, I mean, at that time I was working in Airtra, they sponsored a particular uh, uh, trip to Kenya. We went to Kenya on a particular uh, uh, educational project itself. When we went there, of course, I, this is not a time to narrate the entire incident. I will tell you, we were on the seventh day, we were asked to go on a safari. We went there and what happened was, uh, I was completely shocking. A lion. Uh, which is very powerful and all of a sudden the guy who was a very uh, strong woman okay, and she she was the one who was actually giving food and then uh, uh, feeding that particular lion when the lion was a small cub so when the lion was a baby some cub is baby so when the lion was a small cub uh, this um, this woman was responsible for feeding and the lion did not forget her 
even though we people did not know the past and we thought that the lion would kill that lady no she that that lion that wild beast was playing with her it happens and she was speaking to that lion as if she is speaking to a human being don't we do the same thing even in our dogs we call our dog tiger the tiger the I mean it is not a tiger we also know that we say go come illiba immediately it comes go hogo means it goes runs it runs you run it runs are we not speaking to the animals so this is something a little glorified so here she is speaking to birds so take it in that sense now she starts speaking uh, to the birds so this is something like what is called a soliloquy only because she is the only character now right now and she she is actually speaking to the birds so what is going to happen we will see here so what oh, of course this doesn't have any relevance to the play it is only something like that she is speaking here they come they means those birds they just know when to expect me okay they definitely know just is uh, like it is used in that sense definitely they definitely know when to expect me she rises walks toward right and throws three handfuls of uh, bread crumbs these are for the spryers spryers means very active okay then uh, these for the gluttons means those uh, birds may be a little fat they are appearing so you are gluttony gluttony means uh, not doing much work but eating a lot that is too much unwanted unhealthy desire for eating that is called gluttony that, that fellow is there it is called these for little ones who are the most persistent they keep on uh, uh, demanding Okay, you mean you mean that that is persisting. She laughs. She laughs. She returns to her seat and watches with a plus pleased expression the pigeons feeding. So the, when the pigeons are all different types of pigeons are eating, she keeps watching them. There, that big one is always fast. She is telling all these things to herself. Yesterday I told you, if you remember correctly, I wrote two words here. Soliloquy aside, self talk. She is talking within herself. So self. there is the uh, what is called uh, application of we will have application of application of soliloquy uh, you have a soliloquy here that is self talk within oneself she is talking soliloquy self talk to birds so she is speaking to the birds the birds have come and she starts speaking to them so maybe one or two birds i will draw here okay so that this particular picture can be complete so here you have the birds now what will happen let us see them she says there the big one is always first i know him by his uh, big head now one now another now two now three now four that little fellow is the least timid it is very brave Uh, i believe he would eat from my hand that one mm, takes his piece and flies up to that branch alone he is a philosopher how much you eat only that much you how much you want you eat only that much and later you go away disinterestedly then that is uh, me that means you are a philosopher so maybe one particular bird had done it so she calls him philosopher but where do they all come it seems as if the news had spread aha don't quarrel there is enough for all i will bring more tomorrow don't worry don't worry i have got don't fight with each other i am giving you more like that please she throws even a little bit more in front of them and all of them started chipping and then even they start uh, what is called uh, eating those things like that it goes on then what happens is at that point the hero enters Enter Don Gonzalo and Johnito from left. Don Gonzalo is an old gentleman of seventy, gouty and impatient. He is a little, I mean, uh, fat, and uh, you can find a very tall personality, fat, and then you can see even the lower part of this particular uh, chin coming down, and even the the skin also has become a little swaggy. So it is like that. He leans upon Johnito's arm and drags his feet somewhat as he walks. So he is not walking as we walk, rather he is touching. He is just uh, bringing some uh, soil with him as he started walking. So he brings some dust with him. Dust actually comes into the air. 
dust actually comes into the air. So, Don Gonzalo now gets irritated and says, he's already in irritation as he enters. I think their time away. They should be saying mass. But that the fellows, they are still sitting and they must be praying to God. They are saying prayers. Huh? Midnight mass, midnight prayers, they continue. Hmm? For hours and hours, it is something like that. How much time do you want to pray? Like that he speaks. You can sit there and say, no, there is only a lady. Donna Lara turns her head and listens. So, Johnito now says, Johnito is the servant of, as I told you, who Don Gonzalo. Okay, Don Gonzalo is the master and Don Lara is the mistress. So, Johnito now says to Gonzalo, he says, no, you can sit on that bench where you can have only a lady, only a lady is sitting, you can sit there. When the word lady came out, then immediately Donna Lara's attention was on both of them. So she looked at them. I want Janito, I want a bench to myself. Why should I sit with a lady? I want my own bench. Now this is some kind of persistence as you grow old. Don't you see old people in the house? Old people, they want what they say should happen. They don't care any other, uh, other things. The only, uh, what is called criterion for that is their age. You are born later than me. So you must listen to us. This is the attitude. Some, anybody can make a mistake and sometimes there are chances that these old people can also make mistakes. Even that is also possible. But sometimes they ignore and better to satisfy is to do the duty or at least say no to what they say. Don't say no to them. That is a very healthy way in which you can preserve your relationship with the old people. So he is a little uh, very stubborn in his views. I won't join it. I want a bench to myself. Look at that sentence. But there is not, there is no such bench which can be yours entirely. That one over there is you see that, uh, that bench which is far away, that is my bench. There are three priests already sitting there. Three priests are there. There are three clergymen, maybe church people. They are already there. Priests. So the holy men are already there. So they are talking, or they are sitting there. Rout them out. Hmm? Have they gone? Rout them out. Destroy them or send them away. Do, I mean, force them to leave the place. Something like that. No, indeed, they are still talking. They are still talking, sir. Don Gonzalo now says, just as if they were glued to the seat. No hope of their living. Come this way, Johnito. So, like that, if you see the characterization, we find Donna Lara to be a very calm woman. So, we can see that she is very calm going. Whereas, we find uh, Donna Lara. Donna Lana is a calm and uh, what is called a reasonable woman. She understands everything. Reasonable lady, we see. Whereas um, Don Gonzalo, initially we see them like this. Don Gonzalo is a is fiery or rather hot tempered or quick tempered, let me write those words, maybe you can easily, uh, quick tempered, okay, he is given to emotions quickly, quick, quick tempered an unstable man, he is not stable with his opinions, unstable man, that is how initially their characters can be seen. So Don Gonzalo is a, is quick and quick tempered and unstable. Um, okay, he is a is a quick tempered and unstable man. That is how the writer sexually, the dramatist sexually portrayed them initially, and this opinion continues in fact. So now what happens? You see, and he is very indignant. Uh, they walk towards the birds, right? Come, Johnny, towards like that. They go towards the birds. Donna then says, Look out! Hey, 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 see, see, like that she says. Indignant means angrily. Don Gonzalo, are you speaking to me, Senora? We don't know each other. Why are you speaking? This is his attitude. Yes, to you, Donna says. 
Why do you wish? Why do you wish to speak to me, madam? She is, is asking. You have scared away the birds who were feeding on my crumbs. They are happily eating my bread crumbs, bread pieces. You have made them afraid. You have scared them away. That's why they went away. What do I care about the birds? Why should I worry about the birds? I am more worried about my seat, not about the birds. But I am worried. But I do. Donna Lara says, "This is a public park." Why do you say as if it is your house, madam? This is a public park. He gives a reason. Donna Lara. Then why do you complain that the police have taken your bench? She is very logical. That's why I wrote the word reasonable. She has reasons. Okay, and so she has got that logic. I have taken another kind of reasonable. So the she has got the reason, and she says. If this is a park, then every chair belongs to anyone. Then why do you complain that three priests are sitting in your chair? It is not your chair. She takes that logical point out. Then, uh, Senora, we have not met. Okay, I can't imagine why you take the liberty of addressing me. Come, join it on. We didn't meet each other. We don't know each other, right? Then why are you talking to me? Keep quiet. You need. There is nothing to talk to me. Like that, he says. Come, Janet. Like that, he goes. Where can we go? What an ill-natured old man. She starts complaining. She is again. This is another soliloquy where she says to herself, "Ill-natured old man." This is a certificate for Don 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 Gonzalo God um, in the opinion of Don Alvar. And what must people get? Why must people get so fussy and cross? Why are they angry and why are they so irritating uh, when they reach a certain age? She has forgotten that she too has reached that age. She is sweet. She is uh, good in opinion. She is not ill-tempered. She is not quick-tempered because she is not all these things. That is hot-tempered, quick-tempered, angry. Okay, illogical. Very harshly speaking, she is not all this. She expects the world to be like that. Even the, she expects how she is. Yet bhavam tad bhavati. What is there in you will be seen by you. I tell you one important thing. Some time ago, one of my relatives told me, Saratan, nothing is happening without fight. Only when I fight, fight with people, people are listening to me. Otherwise, they are not listening. What to do? Then I told, it just means it is happening or not happening, sir. You keep it aside. But one thing is sure, because you have that particular fighting spirit in you, you find people who are ready to take your fighting spirit and are ready to offer you the same kind of fighting spirit to you as well. So you are the one who has to change now, not other people. You kill your fighting spirit, then you will cease to have experiences where fighting spirit is required. You will meet only calm people, very peaceful people, people who will listen to your words. And before you could complete your sentence, your orders are completed. You will definitely come across with such people because in the world there are such people as well. So what is there in you will be seen by you outside. So it, this is how we need to understand because uh, um, our Donna Lara seems to be very compassionate because we think that Donna Lara is very kind-hearted, not quick-tempered, not indignant. Okay, very decent, reasonable, logical. Because she belongs to all these good qualities, she expects the world to be so sweet. But in reality, that doesn't happen. There are work, there are people who are entirely opposite to that particular quality. That is how things keep happening. That is how things go on. So this is something which is very remarkable. So that's why she is surprised. Hmm? Why people become so angry when they become old? Because she has, she knows that she has already become old. Yet she has not become indignant. That is her quality. Just because you possess one particular quality, you cannot expect all the people to possess all the qualities. Some time ago, an old man came to our house and he started speaking to my father. But I didn't intervene in their dialogue. Why should I? So I took my laptop, went inside and started working my own things. Then my wife said, come on, uncle has come. Why don't you give this cup of coffee to both of them? 
So I carried the two cups of coffee to them. At that point, I had to over here because I entered the room. I am not a yogi to cut myself off entirely from others' conversations. Please understand that. I have not yet reached that age. So very compulsively, I had to listen to the dialogue. At that time, he was the newly the newly arrived person was telling. Uh -huh. My son listens only to his wife. He has stopped listening to me. Then I asked that uncle, uncle, what wrong is there? Why did you get your son married to another woman? You got your son married to another woman because he had to listen to that woman only. I don't see any problem in your son's behavior. If your son starts listening to the neighbor's neighbor or neighboring woman, then the problem will be there. He is not listening to any other woman, any other woman except that his own wife. What problem is there? I don't see any problem in that. This is the logic. So, how a particular person changes and change is definitely happening. And why you suffer? Because your expectations from that particular person are like that. Just as you change, if your son is also going to change, if you have this kind of idea in your head, cemented, you will stop expecting certain things and that's why you will never get angry. I take the side of Donna Lara in this case. The way in which she speaks is very logical and we need to follow that one. And the other fellow finally succumbs to her advice one. He has to listen to her. Everyone has to listen to such people only. She is really wise. And so she says, I am glad he lost that bench too. Sir seemed right for scaring the birds. That he has lost that bench also. That is the correct thing. He didn't say it to that man. She, she said it to herself only. He is curious. Yes, yes, yes. Find a seat if you can, poor man. He is wiping the perspiration from his face. Here he comes. A carriage would not raise more dust than his feet. Ah, uh -huh. he is now he is bringing more dust on his shoes from his shoes as he walks. Even a small carriage will carry will not carry that much of dust. The fellow has to suffer because he has scared my birds. Like that she says, but she is not angry. Please understand that. Enter Don Gonzalo once again, and Johnito by right hand uh, walk toward left. So they they could not find any seat. They might have wandered here and there, but could not find any. Uh, see, has the priest gone yet, Janito? The old man who is tired and who is also sweating says this. Janito says, No, indeed, senor, they are still there. They are still there. So, Don Gonzalo, so what happens here is Dona Lara, Dona Lara is, is glad. This is the word used by the uh, player. He is glad that. Gonzalo did not get a seat, did not get a seat and uh, Gonzalo, okay, this Gonzalo fails to secure a seat for himself. He fails to secure a seat for himself. He really works a lot to get a particular seat. But uh, the ultimate thing is that he fails to secure a seat. So that is what happens there. There what happens, let us see. Then, uh, he says, Have the priest gone yet, Janito? No, indeed, senor, they are still there. The other one should place more benches here for these Sunday mornings. Okay, well, I suppose I must resign myself and sit on the bench with the old lady. So he finally decides that he says, usually we put the blame on somebody. This is another important quality of human beings, which the uh, which the playwrights, uh, the twin playwrights, they are going to highlight. Always uh, we have the tendency, or rather at least, okay, as a human being, I have the tendency. Let it, let me put it on myself. Why should I blame anybody else? Uh, as a human being, uh, we have the tendency to, or rather I have the tendency to put the blame on somebody else. If I do something wrong or something goes wrong because of my intervention as well, I am not ready to accept my mistake. 
I will say it is because of that, because of this small example which happens in your own life. Imagine offline classes start and a student comes late. The teacher asks, why are you late? The student says, the bus was late. It means he is right. He has come down. Maybe that could be the reason. But see, that could not be the reason also. There are chances that the bus has, or all the buses have already arrived. And the fellow moved here and there at the tuck shop or at the canteen or even at a bakery or some other place or in the library. He had to return the books already. It has been some three, four days and he didn't return it. So he had to return. He went there and later something, something or he met his class teacher. His class teacher was very angry. Something happened. There are n number of reasons. But he is not telling all those things. He says the bus was late. So this is the tendency. Even if we go wrong, we have the tendency to place, I mean, place the blame on the third party, not on ourselves. Hey, I have done the mistake. I will not repeat it. Sir, please. This should be the attitude. But that is not the attitude. See, Gonzalo, what he says. He says, the government is foolish that it has kept only very few benches here. They should have kept more benches so that people like me can come and see. Why, when there is an empty bench, can't you accommodate yourself? If you can't accommodate your own self, why should the Lord accommodate you? These are some of the important things which must be learned here. But anyway, let us come to the point here. And sit on the bench with the old lady. Muttering to himself, he sits at the extreme end of Donna Laura's bench and looks at her indignantly. Touches his hat as he greets her. Good morning. So finally he comes sits in one corner, okay, and Donna Lara is sitting in one corner, Gonzalo is sitting in another corner, and um, he, he mutters to himself what kind of government does, what is this like that, he mutters to himself, and finally he removes his cap, which I put there, and then greets her, and says, good morning, Senora, something like that, good morning, what, you hear again, she has seen everything, but she says as if she has not seen, so she says, what, you hear again, I repeat that we have not met. Why are you angry? We have not met each other. Then I was responding to your salute, sir. But you said good morning. This is my reply to that. Good morning should be answered by good morning only. And that is all you should have said. Why say, why you say all the other words? I was responding that one. Or I repeat that we have not met. All these words, I repeat that we have not met is said by Don Gonzo. Why are why what you here again? Why are you talking all these things? Good morning should be responded by good morning. You should have asked permission to sit on this bench, which is mine. I am sitting here, so this bench is mine. She is just playing with the old fellow. So what he has said, she has got that point and she is telling her. This is my bench, you should have asked permission to sit. The benches are here are public property. Uh, these benches are not yours, they, are, they belong to the government, public property, all the people. Why? You yourself said the one the priests have was yours. You said that on which the priests are sitting belong to you. You yourself said, now what is this? Then, very well, very well, I have nothing more to say. Because he clutched his tongue between his teeth. Because he, he knew that he said something which is not correct. So he knew that, like that he clutches maybe. And then he says, I have nothing more to say. Senile old lady. Okay, senile senility itself is old. So, senile old lady. Very, very old lady. As if he was very young. You know, he says, senile old lady. She ought to be at home knitting her and counting her beads. So, he started saying this to us himself. He says, old lady. Hmm? She should be in the house. Why old lady is coming to the park? She should be in the house doing some knitting work or counting her beads. Rudraksha Mahala Japa, something like that she should have done. Why all this counting the beads? Something like that Japa Mahala. So why can't she do that? Why can't, why should she come here? Don't grumble anymore. I am not going to do just to please you. Just to because, hey old man, you are saying something to yourself against me, complaining against me. Don't think I am leaving. I am a very strong woman. To make you happy, I am not leaving. Like that she says. Then uh, Gonzalo, brushing the dust from his shoes with his handkerchief. Now he takes his handkerchief and starts brushing his 
uh, shoes because they are full of dust and soil. Then she, if the ground were sprinkled a little, it would be an improvement. He says, see the ground, how much. He says it to himself. This particular ground, they should have sprinkled some water so more dust will not come up. Do you use hand, your hand kerchief as a shoe brush? <laughs> she asked. That is, see how she is uh, making the old man irritated. So he has taken his hand kerchief and starts brushing. And she says, so you do you have the habit of using a hand kerchief as a shoe brush? That is old man, when you know that you have to, you have the habit of cleaning the shoes wherever you wish, don't you have the habit of carrying a shoe brush with you? This is what she wanted to ask, but she put it in this way. So it is not what you wish to say, but it is how you wish to say that matters. Please understand this. Even if you want to call a particular fellow idiot, you can call him not so very intelligent. How you say that is very important. How you say that is very important, not what you say. If you call a particular fellow animal, he will be very angry. But if you call him tiger, he is very happy. How you say this? Many of them call themselves tigers, I can't understand how it is. So if we call them animals, they are angry. But if you call them tiger, he is very happy. Ah, I am tiger. You are animal only. So how you speak is more important, not what you speak. So if you want to call a fellow idiot, don't call him idiot if you are making an enemy. Better you call him an unintelligent fellow. So you have still that particular word. Not so very intelligent, not so very intelligent. If you have used so many intensifiers, it means he must be a very foolish fellow. But intelligent is the catching word there. So he will be okay. I am not very intelligent. At least there should be some intelligence in me. Like that it goes. So this is how you speak. That matters a lot in this particular word. Not what you speak. So that is how she says. So do you use your handkerchief as a shoe brush? She asks. Why not? Why can't we use? So do you use a shoe brush as a handkerchief? She asks this. What you do with a handkerchief, will you do with a shoe brush? Handkerchiefs we usually use to wipe our face. Will you use a shoe brush to wipe your face? Wipe your face. Like that, he asks. She asks. Then what right have you to criticize my actions? Sorry, who are you, Mama? Why have you come here? Why are you running behind me? I use shoe brush or handkerchief. It is my property, my shoes, my handkerchief, my dust. Who are you to talk all these things? What business do you have? That is a neighbor's right. I am your neighbor. So as a neighbor, this is my seat. As you said, every person will have his seat or her seat. This is my seat. You are my neighbor. So I ask. Like that she starts. Juanito, give me my book. I do not care to listen to nonsense. That what nonsense people are talking. Juanito, give me my book. I will read it. You are very polite, sir. This woman now says very sarcastically, Are wow, what polite person you are. Like that she says very sarcastically. Pardon me, senora, he is now getting agitated. Madam, please forgive me. But never interfere with what does not concern you. See, this, this is not a matter that your matter. Cleaning the shoes which belong to me is my act and my prerogative. Who are you to talk and complain and criticize? You don't have any right, please. Please be quiet. I generally say what I think. What comes to my mind, I say. This is my habit. Just as you have your habits, I have my habits, she said. And more to the same effect, give me the book, Janito. Janito, give me the book. I want to read. Then, uh, here, Senor, Jonito takes a book from his pocket, hands it uh, to Don Gonzalo, then exists by it. Don Gonzalo, casting indignant glances at Don Alara, puts on an enormous pair of glasses, uh, takes from his pocket uh, a reading glass, adjusts both to suit him, and opens his book. So, at that time, of course, he has already large glasses, above which he has put even reading glasses. They used to be uh, some kind of a clip. It is something like that. I will try to show you, giving you an idea. Imagine these are spectacles which are very heavy and something like a clip. The clip will be attached 
like this. Imagine that the clip also has two glasses. So the two glasses are reading glasses which actually fall down to the frame. And then the total thing will be kept in this way. It may seem a little awkward when I show you, but that is how at that time people were using reading glasses. So enormous means very, that is he didn't have much eyesight. His eyesight was very faulty, we should say. And um, he has put on even heavier, what is a reading glasses and starts reading. That and Jonito has already left, he starts reading the book. We will uh, stop our particular class at this point. We will leave both of them at this point, thinking that they are now going to what is called uh, read all these things and he is going to read on many things and then something is going to happen. So here ends today's class. This is part two of the play. So what happens later past and the future both that I have to do in my tomorrow's class. Definitely I will be doing that. So till the other teachers may be coming and taking class for you. Uh, so they are waiting as well. So I may have to leave the class for them. So let me end the class here for your um, what is called uh, uh, benefit to listen to other classes. So in my tomorrow's class, again you will find the same characters coming. Maybe you may not see these big pictures because I already have given. Maybe we will draw a little smaller uh, pictures and then we will see that uh, they actually speak several things um, about results and about the play. What they are going to see, I will definitely talk about with the help of the text as well. So one more reminder to you, we haven't uh, entered the most important part of this play. Tomorrow we are going to enter. Till now it is something like an introduction only I should say to the very story. What happened is very little. Hmm? Two, two characters have started speaking to each other. One fed some uh, food to the birds and other, uh, other actually uh, scared them and the birds went away and Donalara became a little angry and they started speaking something. Only this much happened. More things are going to happen. What would be those things? We will definitely tell you tomorrow. And I expect you all to be with the text, not the textbook. See that it is in front of you in any form. Thank you very much for uh, coming all the way. Anybody who wants to take a screenshot of the content that I have written, if you think that it is going to be useful to you in some way or other, please uh, take it down. You can take a screenshot of this. And in my tomorrow's class, as I, we will see many things. As usual, take very best care of yourself. These are troubled times. And also take very best care of the elderly people in your house. So. Till I see you again in my tomorrow's class, have a nice time, enjoy yourself and take very best care. Thank you.